soft, cozy, and sustainable. Three words I don't use when describing my underwear, but that all changed when I tried Parade. Parade makes sustainable, creative basics so soft and comfortable that you literally cannot wait to put them on. This company launched only two and a half years ago with the mission to make underwear more accessible, inclusive, and self-expressive. Since then, they've sold over 2 million pairs. I posted a little bit ago about a reel and in this reel, um, it was like a morning routine in my life and I was wearing a purple pajama set and it was from Parade and I got so many comments, DMs, questions where my set was from. So not only was I wearing a pajama set from Parade, but I was actually wearing Parade's underwear as well and I am so obsessed with with their underwear, specifically the high rise thong, because it is just so soft. I can't even feel it on my body. It feels like I'm wearing nothing at all, which is how underwear should feel. From extra small to triple extra large, Parade's inclusive sizing means that you will have zero trouble finding that perfect bralette or pair of underwear. And for every Parade purchase you make, they give back to organizations that support reproductive rights, racial equality, and LGBTQ plus communities. Upgrade your top drawer with an exclusive 20% off Parade. Go to yourparade.com slash manifest and use code manifest to get 20% off. That's yourparade.com slash manifest. Fest. With Mother's Day being on May 8th, which I can't believe it is literally so soon, I wanted to get my mom something unique, something that I knew she would really appreciate. But honestly, my creative juices just weren't really flowing. And I knew there was one place to go that knew exactly what I wanted before I even knew what I wanted. And that place is Uncommon Goods. How do I even explain Uncommon Goods? Honestly, you just have to like check it out for yourself to see what I'm talking about. But it's an online shop that's filled with totally unique and unexpected gifts. And when I say unexpected, I truly mean like the most original things that I couldn't even think of myself, but I wanted them without even knowing that I wanted them. Since Mother's Day is coming up, I know I wanted to get my mom the perfect gift and Uncommon Goods has the best stuff for literally everyone in your life. So one thing that I knew that I wanted to get for my mom was something that had to do with wine. My parents are like huge wine snobs and Uncommon Goods has this stemless aerating wine glass. And my parents especially like always put like an aerator on their wine, but this glass has the aerator in the glass like guys seriously I didn't even know this was a thing until I went on to Uncommon Goods and I'm like oh my god my mom would actually adore this Uncommon Goods is the place to go for thoughtful original gifts for every type of parent on Mother's Day it's a Brooklyn based company that's all about giving back and with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods they'll give one dollar to a nonprofit of your choice They've already donated more than $2.8 million to date. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash manifest. That's uncommongoods.com slash manifest for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, they're all out of the ordinary. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Manifest with Tori D. Simone. I'm your host, Tori D. Simone, and I think this is going to be a fan favorite episode. Normally, I don't call out my episodes like thinking that you guys are really going to like them, but I think this is one that you guys are really going to like and really going to resonate with. I know that the past couple of weeks, I've really been resonating with it, and I feel like we're always aligned. Like, when I'm feeling something, you guys are feeling the same thing. Like, when we're going through something, we're all going through it. And I don't know about you guys, but I've just seen a couple of common themes on social media, and also with it being warm weather outside, I've just been very, like, into reinvention we know that I'm like so into reinvention like literally all the time anyway but there is something different about this that just feels like I don't know it just feels good to read the quotes I've been I'll get into it I'll get into it but the whole theme of today's episode creating space for your manifestations to happen or you know creating the time in your day to make like your dreams happen, the dream life you want, building habits towards your dream life 
it's just something that I think is really important. And I think you guys are really going to like today's episode. I still have no idea what I'm going to title this. So hopefully I can pull something together and come up with a title that like actually makes sense because I can't think of one for the life of me right now. So yeah. Um, also guys, before we jump into this episode, if you guys wouldn't mind just leaving a five star review of the podcast on Spotify or Apple, um, it really, really helps the show. And what helps the show even more is sharing it, putting it on your story or sharing it with a friend, putting it in a group chat and then screenshotting the group chat to put on your story. Um, it just really helps and I love seeing it. And I just, any growth that we can get with the show, I'm all about. So like I said, I'm really excited for today's episode. But before we get into the topic, I need to talk to the ultimatum about someone. Otherwise, I'm literally just going to explode. Okay, so I briefly talked about it last week because I just started it when I was like getting ready to record last week's episode. It was on the background and I was like, this is just such a wild show to me. Now I'm done it because they released the last episode yesterday when I'm recording this and it is just so crazy to me. Okay. I'm probably going to talk spoilers. So if you haven't watched the show and if you want to skip ahead, but let's talk about the show really quick. So first of all, I now know everyone's names, which is awesome because the last episode I did not. I have to say that I was totally hooked onto the show. Um, the concept is beyond bizarre to me and the lines are so blurred. I feel like this entire show was in a gray space and in a gray area. Like when Colby and Madeline were fighting because Colby kissed another girl, I agree with Madeline. I would also be upset, but Madeline was like in a trial marriage with someone else, like kissing him and getting like you know, very emotionally deep with him and arguably what's worse, like a kiss at a bar or an emotional connection that you're developing with someone for three weeks. And to make it weird, like the only reason that it was okay for Madeline to do it was because it was with Randall who was in the experiment and it was like an approved person and Colby did it with someone outside of the experiment and it wasn't like quote unquote an approved person. So that's where the lines get so blurred. And that's why I think this fight was just so bizarre and so hard to even fight about because the lines across the board were just incredibly blurred. Like, yes, you are kind of in an open relationship. Like you're supposed to be single. That's what they say in the show, but you can't be single with the wrong person. Do you know what I mean? So it's such a tricky situation and the whole show was just a bunch of blurred lines and just made for like very illogical fighting. And I also love like when Jake and April like got back together and April went through Jake's phone and Jake was like so mad, like what a a violation of privacy. But it's like, okay, if you don't have, if you should, you shouldn't be having these videos on your phone anyway, like, shouldn't we be mad about the videos rather than like her going through your phone? Like, I don't know. The whole thing was just this whole gray area of like, what can we do? What can't we do? What's okay? What's not And it was just so incredibly awkward to watch like these, like on the girls nights, like they're all getting together while with one another's significant others, like sleeping in bed with them, dating them, kissing them. Like some of them were like intimate, like so crazy. And they just have to like talk about it in front of each other. And there was just so much left out of the show that we didn't see. Like when the guys all got together, that's when the whole like club thing came up. We didn't know anything about a club. Like how were we supposed to know what the hell's going on if no one ever told us that like they they all went to a club one night? Like we didn't know that. You know what I mean? And they had such a big plot line about this club that we knew nothing about. So the show was confusing to follow at times because a lot was clearly done off camera and... It was just a wild show. And I felt really bad for April because she was clearly like so invested in this process and like such a big person. I, I could never be as big of a person as she was. Like if my boyfriend found someone else, okay, here's what I don't get. You want to get married. You're like, here's the ultimate to marry me or move on. So I'm going to let you date other people. I get in theory that like, it's supposed to make the other person realize like, oh, I want to be with you like Randall and Shanique, but, or like Alexis and Hunter. 
But if I gave my boyfriend an ultimatum and he was like, sure, I'll go on the show with you and I'm going to date other girls. And then he ended up leaving me for another girl. I, I would simply burn the city down. Like to be quite frank, I would burn the city down. And April is so mature. And she's like, it was the best thing for him. The best thing for us. I brought him on this. Go for it. And I'm like, girl could never be me, but man, do I respect it. She is such a big person for doing that. Literally could never be me. Um, It's just so crazy to see how everyone reacted differently to it. And I also just, I felt really sad for April because you could tell like as soon as Jake was back with April after his like whole trial marriage with um, Ray, he was just so beyond checked out of the relationship with April. And I really felt for her because Like I've been there before where I'm like with someone and like, I know we're just going to end up breaking up. It's not going to work out, but like you want to try and you can only give so much if the other person isn't even meeting you a fraction of the way it's, it was hard to watch. I just felt really bad for her. Um, but she came to terms with it like towards the end and it was just a crazy show to watch, but I was beyond addicted to it. Um, I did watch the reunion and I loved the reunion. I loved seeing everyone like later on. Um, I think Madeline and Colby are like so freaking cute. I really like them together. And here's what's so crazy about this show as well is like we get to see real couples supposedly. Like the only people I actually believe now are like a real couple is Madeline and Colby and Alexis and Hunter and probably Lauren and Nate. But like the others, I don't know. Like, it kind of just felt like actors to me the whole time. And I also found their Instagrams and like before the last episode came out, like I wanted to find everyone's Instagram. Obviously they didn't have photos up with one another, but like, I imagine that's in like a contract that they had to like take down their relationship photos. But even their photos that were, let's say in between relationship photos weren't really pictures that like you would post if you were like in a relationship, not in the spotlight. You know what I mean? Like if these people are personalities pre-show, I totally get it. But if they're just supposed to be regular people that are in relationships and then came on the show for an ultimatum, their like relationship didn't reflect that. And it was just bizarre. So I was like, are these people actors? And like, I don't know. It just seemed like they were kind of actors. And then I actually had someone DM me um, last episode. Thank you for this because you are T and you are my girl for doing this. I feel like Dumois. Um, She was like, no, they're not actors. Like I work with Alexis and Hunter. And she said like Alexis is as bold in real life, which is so funny. So thanks for that DM. Seriously made my day. Any inside scoop you guys have, I am so in on. I literally felt like Dumas when I got that DM. I'm like, oh my God, should I post this? Is this like a blind item? <laughs> um, but anyway, it was just crazy. The whole show was so crazy. Oh, but back to what I was saying. Um, the whole reason that I think Madeline and Col- Colby were like this couple that people loved and then hated and then loved and then hated, I ended up liking them. I didn't really like Colby like towards the end, but I liked him in the beginning, but not the end. But then at the end, I I did like him. I think what happens is we don't normally see real couples fight, right? Like we don't see what goes on behind closed doors. And this show does show us what happens behind closed doors. So then once we see what goes on behind closed doors and then they end up getting engaged and married, we're like, oh my God, why would they do that? Like, it seems like the wrong thing to do. But in reality, like what couple doesn't fight? You know, seriously, what couple doesn't fight? And every couple fights, every couple's going to have disagreements. Every couple has to go through growing pains at some point. And I think it's very brave to have that documented. And I think they're opening themselves up to a lot of criticism, critique and judgment. And that must be really hard, especially when you're a young couple, a new couple and now pregnant. Um, I really feel for them and I think it's really easy to judge here. I am sitting literally judging this entire show. It's really easy to judge, but it's not easy to do what they have done. So I really do applaud them and, um, to have like your fights out there in the open is very vulnerable and just a gentle reminder that every couple, every couple fights. And I'm sure that if 
we saw all these couples that are married or engaged, if we saw what goes on behind closed doors, I'm sure we'd all have very similar reactions to like Colby and Madeline getting married. You know what I mean? But they seem super happy. I really like them as a couple. And yeah. Wow. What a great show. I really liked it. I was really into it and I can't wait for season two. Hopefully if there is a season two, um, I would really love to watch more of that show. I was very, very into it. Like I was giddy. Like I remember scrolling, um, like going episode to episode and literally just being like, this is literally the best show I've ever watched. It is so good. It's so crazy. You could never be me. And I was like so hooked on it. If you guys are watching the video podcast, I keep looking over to this side of my screen because my windows are open because it's such a gorgeous day out right now. I'm going on a walk after this. I've been super into walks, but anyway, my windows are open and there's a spider that is crawling on the walls and I'm realizing that I'm going to have to deal with that when this, when I'm done recording this episode. So maybe I'll just talk forever so I don't have to deal with that. Or maybe the spider will just like find its way out. It looks like a little spider. You know what's so funny to me when people are always like, oh, the bugs are more afraid of you than you are of them. Who told you that? The bug? I'm afraid of that bug. Way more than it's afraid of me, I bet. Just like stay outside. I'll stay inside. We can like coexist, whatever. All right, let's get on to today's topic, which I'm super excited to talk about today. Soft, cozy, and sustainable. Three words I don't use when describing my underwear, but that all changed when I tried Parade. Parade makes sustainable, creative basics so soft and comfortable that you literally cannot wait to put them on. This company launched only two and a half years ago with the mission to make underwear more accessible, inclusive, and self-expressive. Since then, they've sold over 2 million pairs. I posted a little bit ago about a reel, and in this reel, um, it was like a morning routine in my life, and I was wearing a purple pajama set, and it was from Parade, and I got so many comments, DMs, questions where my set was from. So not only was I wearing a pajama set from Parade, but I was actually wearing Parade's underwear as well, and I am so obsessed with their underwear, specifically the high-rise thong, because it is just so incredibly amazing. It is so soft. I can't even feel it on my body. It feels like I'm wearing nothing at all, which is how underwear should feel. From extra small to triple extra large, Parade's inclusive sizing means that you will have zero trouble finding that perfect bralette or pair of underwear. Did I mention that they're all about sustainability? Parade crafts their signature styles with super soft certified recycled yarns. Plus all their products come in biodegradable packaging. And for every parade purchase you make, they give back to organizations that support reproductive rights, racial equality, and LGBTQ plus communities. Upgrade your top drawer with an exclusive 20% off parade. Go to yourparade.com slash manifest and use code manifest to get 20% off. That's yourparade.com slash manifest. With Mother's Day being on May 8th, which I can't believe it is literally so soon, I wanted to get my mom something unique, something that I knew she would really appreciate. But honestly, my creative juices just weren't really flowing. And I knew there was one place to go that knew exactly what I wanted before I even knew what I wanted. And that place is Uncommon Goods. How do I even explain Uncommon Goods? Honestly, you just have to like check it out for yourself to see what I'm talking about. But it's an online shop that's filled with totally unique and unexpected gifts. And when I say unexpected, I truly mean like the most original things that I couldn't even think of myself, but I wanted them without even knowing that I wanted them. Since Mother's Day is coming up, I know I wanted to get my mom the perfect gift and Uncommon Goods has the best stuff for literally everyone in your life. So one thing that I knew that I wanted to get for my mom was something that had to do with wine. My parents are like huge wine snobs. Like they want, I don't know, like fresh wine all the time. And Uncommon Goods has this stemless aerating wine glass. And my parents especially like always put like an aerator on their wine, but this glass has the aerator in the glass. Like guys, seriously, I didn't even know this was a thing until I went on to Uncommon Goods and I'm like, oh my God, my mom would actually adore this. Uncommon Goods is the place to go for thoughtful, original gifts for every type of parent on Mother's Day. When you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. They carry gifts from over 900 independent makers. 
Uncommon Goods has an experience that you can gift. You can give your mom a flower arranging class or a cocktail making class or plenty of other online virtual experiences that you can even do together if you want. They've got plenty of DIY gifts too if that's her scene. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, that are often handmade or made in the US and they don't sell products made with leather, feathers, or fur. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash manifest. That's uncommongoods.com slash manifest for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, they're all out of the ordinary. So today we're going to be talking about creating space for your manifestations slash dream life to happen. And alongside of this, do your daily habits align with where you want to be rather than where you are right now? This is kind of like the chicken and the egg theory, like what came first, the chicken or the egg? And I'd also love to know your take on that. Like what did come first, the chicken or the egg? I kind of think the egg came first, but then where did the egg come from? Obviously, that's the whole debate, but I'd love to know. Anyway, this is kind of like the same thing. Like what comes first, creating space for your manifestations to happen or doing the daily habits to get you to where you want to be. The daily habits to create space for your manifestations and for your dream life to happen. Um, a quote that I say all the time in spin class and that I just think is so valuable in life is nothing changes if nothing changes. And it is such a simple quote, but it is so true. If you want to see change in your life, you have to be the change that you want to see in your life. If you want to be somewhere in your life that you're currently not at and you're not doing anything to change it, well, don't expect anything in your life to change. Nothing changes if nothing changes. I saw a tweet. I don't have Twitter. Oh, also today, Elon Musk did that whole like offer of buying Twitter. Crazy. Anyway. Um, I saw a tweet, I don't have Twitter, but on Instagram, someone like reposted this and I loved it. It said, at some point, you got to be real with yourself about the gap between the life you want to live and the life that your daily habits are leading you towards. I'm going to say that one more time. At some point, you got to be real with yourself about the gap between the life you want to live and the life that your daily habits are leading you towards. That is so true. And it's been something that I've been thinking a lot about recently, but I've never been able to put it into words, but that tweet perfectly put it into words. It's like when Taylor Swift sings and she says things that I'm like, I have been thinking that, but I didn't know how to conceptualize it. I didn't know how to speak it. And she just speaks it so elegantly and so perfectly. So that is exactly what I've been thinking lately. Like, the life you want and the life you currently have, the life you currently have, I'm assuming is not the life you want if you're trying to get to a different point in your life. But if you are constantly going through the daily motions of the rat race, I refer a lot in this episode to like the rat race of life. If you're just going through the motions of the rat race, how can you build the life you want if you don't actively work towards that dream life or these manifestations every day? It's not just going to show up at your doorstep. Like, for example, if you want to be an influencer, you have to start doing the things that influencers do. It's not just going to fall on your lap. There's like an audio that's going around Instagram and I'm sure TikTok that's like, be cringe, post the photos, da da da, who cares what people think. And it is so true. Like, if your dream is to be an influencer, you got to show up as an influencer. You got to post the photos. You got to find the like to know it's. You got to link stuff. You got to, you know, engage with other accounts. You got to start showing up as an influencer. Otherwise, we could just sit here all day and be all talk and say, I want to be an influencer. I want to be this. I want to be that. But then your daily habits aren't bringing you anywhere towards where you want to be. If you want to be a doctor, for example, you have to start getting the grades slash making the life choices that you will that will get you into med school to be a doctor. You won't just be a doctor because you say, well, I want to be a doctor. You know what I mean? You're going to have to show up for your grades. You're going to have to show up to school. You're going to have to write the essays. You're going to have to really dedicate yourself to something if you want to be a doctor. And if your daily habits right now are failing tests, not going to class, not putting effort into your grades, you might not become a doctor. You know what I mean? Like it's your daily habits 
that are influencing your future life decisions or your future life plans. If you work a nine to five, but you want to start your own business, you need to side hustle before or after work. Your company won't just start itself. No matter how nice that might sound, we can all live in la la land and we can all dream and fantasize about a life that we want without putting action to it. And it's always just going to stay a dream. But if you actually want this life to happen, you have to put action behind your thoughts and you need to practice daily habits to get you to where you want to be, not where you are. But before all of this, you need to create space in your day to day or your week to week life for your manifestations to show up for your manifestations to cultivate to allow them to grow. You need to create space for opportunities that will lead you down different paths. And this can be really simple. It can mean leaving an afternoon open during work or on certain weeks just to think. Maybe if you get really inspired in the shower, you're going to give yourself more time to take a shower that day. If you get really inspired on walks, maybe you're going to schedule out an hour of your day to go on a walk. And I'm not talking like you guys need to take an entire day off work, an entire afternoon off work. But what I am saying is you need to schedule some time in your week to allow yourself to dream, to manifest, to be inspired, to cultivate, to really just to dream. So it's about creating the space and creating the time that will allow you to go down different paths. Um, It can also be saying yes to a dinner with friends that you really hang out with because who knows what's going to spark from that dinner. Um, Creating space can mean saying yes to a job opportunity because maybe the people you meet and the connections you develop will likely bring you further in life than the actual job itself will. Creating space can simply mean making time in your day to dream big and jot down ideas, even if it's five minutes of your day. Even if you know that like when you first wake up, you're motivated, you're inspired, the first five minutes of your day are dedicated to writing down your ideas. That is creating space for a dream life, for your manifestations. You're allowing yourself to get out of the rat race and be in the present and dream big and manifest the life that you want. You're creating the time and the space to dream big, step back from the rat race and think about what it is you truly want. An extraordinary life starts from an extraordinary moment. So you need to break the cycle of routine sometimes to find a breakthrough in your life. If you're constantly just doing the same thing every single day, nothing changes if nothing changes. If you're not inspired in your day-to-day routine, why do you think some amazing idea is just going to come to you? You need to create the space to allow yourself to figure out what is it that I want? Am I happy in my current life? What can I change? Are the people I surround myself with good for me? Could I be leveling up in what ways? And allowing yourself to step back from your day-to-day routines is creating space. Allowing yourself to step back and reflect is all you need sometimes. It doesn't have to be like a think week where you go away for a week. It could be. If you're able to do that, totally go for it. But if you're not able to, you don't need a whole week. You can take five minutes a day. A day, that's it. Five five minutes. Maybe it's a meditation. Maybe it's journaling. Maybe it's calling a friend. I know that whenever I like call my mom, for example, I work through so many things because I'm just speaking out loud to someone else that it really helps me like understand what I'm saying and like really think through what I'm saying. It can show up in a lot of different ways. Then once you know what you want from your life, you need to one, continue to make space in your life for those dreams. And then two, show up to those dreams every single day. Assess your day-to-day life. If you work a nine to five Monday through Friday, let's say for example, In your dream life, I always like kind of go to this example because to me it makes a lot of sense. And I feel like if I wasn't, if I didn't like do podcasting, YouTube, spin, I feel like I'd really be in the beauty space. Whether it, I think I'd be a hairstylist. I really do. I think I would like, I really love hair. It makes a lot of sense to me. I understand hair. Um, I I get it all. Like it just really, excuse me, it really clicks for me. So I typically go to like examples that are based in the beauty industry because it makes sense to me. And I feel like that's what I would be doing if I 
wasn't like a spin studio owner and in like the whole podcast and like social media world. I feel like I'd be in the beauty industry. But anyway, so I typically go to like this example about a lash tech because I think it's really intriguing. So let's assess your day to day life. For example, if you work a nine to five Monday through Friday and your dream is to be a full time lash tech with your own lash studio eventually, your daily habits in your current lifestyle need to support your dreams. They need to support that reality that you're working towards because otherwise, if you're not working towards anything, you're just showing up and you're just doing this rat race every day. You're going through the motions every day and maybe that fulfills you, but personally that wouldn't fulfill me. And I know a lot of you guys were very like-minded. A lot of you guys have a entrepreneurial spirit like I do. And a lot of you guys want to create this life for yourself that you're proud of. And believe it or not, that's an entrepreneurial spirit. Even if you work corporate, even if you never want to open up your own business, even if you're not an entrepreneur and you never are, wanting more for yourself really taps into that spirit. Wanting a better life for yourself is a go-getter. And you guys are go-getters and entrepreneurs are go-getters. So you guys are my go-getter girls. And I know that this will apply to you. Um, I personally, anyway, yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna move on for that. Okay. So you guys cannot go through the motions of your current day-to-day life and then expect a different result and expect a different outcome and expect to be a full-time lash tech with your own studio. If you're literally doing nothing about it, you cannot go through the motions of let's say waking up at 8am, making breakfast, going to work at nine, taking a 30 minute lunch break, coming home, going to do a workout class, making dinner, shower, watching Netflix, just to rinse and repeat the next day. And then let's say on the weekends, you hang out with a group of people that are content in their lives, um, but they don't really aspire to level up. They kind of bitch about their jobs, bitch about their boyfriends, husbands, girlfriends, wives, kids, whatever it might be. Just They just talk about life, but they just don't really have any you know, reason to change. They're content. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you have dreams that are bigger than that, that's when you need to start asking yourself, okay, how can I level up? How can I change who I surround myself with to people that motivate me, to people that inspire me, to people that are aligned in the way that I think and where I want to be in life? Um, There's a quote, and I've said it before, but it's, if you want to be happy, you surround yourself with people that are less successful than you. And if you want to be successful, you surround yourself with people that are more successful than you. And kind of a hot take quote. I wasn't the one that first said it, but it did kind of resonate with me. And I, I really do believe, oh my God, I actually literally had a dream about this last night. Very quick tangent. I had a dream that I was teaching a spin class to a group of calculus students. And as soon as I got in the room and I've never taken calculus a day in my life, mind you. When I got in the room, I realized that these people did not want to spin, that they wanted to do calculus. And I told them, I said, guys, I don't know a thing about calculus and I'm supposed to teach this to you. So I'm very excited to be in this opportunity and have you guys teach me calculus. And they were like, absolutely. And everyone was super supportive. Then I started dating Harry Styles, but he wasn't Harry Styles, but like he was, but it wasn't actually Harry, but it was Harry. And that was amazing. And he was FaceTiming his cousin and I had brown hair, obviously, because now my hair is brunette. And he was like, I really like brunettes. And I was like, oh my God, Harry, Harry freaking styles. What a dream. Anyway, what was I saying? You just need to level up with your friends and you just surround yourself with people that are like-minded in the sense that they want to dream bigger, they're go-getters and they want to do more in their life. Um, I think when you're in, no matter what stage of your life you're in, it's important to surround yourself with people that constantly inspire you and make you want to be a better version of yourself and really just level up your whole lifestyle. You can't live this day-to-day life and expect your current life to change for the better and start living out your dreams if you're never going to take any action towards it. Nothing changes if nothing changes. You have to make active changes in your current life to get to where you want to be. Maybe you make friends with people that are in the industry that you want to be in, or you surround yourself with entrepreneurs, surround yourself with people that want to level up. I'm also referring to like this nine to five girly that wants to own a lash studio example. So maybe she starts surrounding herself with people that are in the lash tech industry or that are just entrepreneurs. 
Maybe on her way to her nine to five, she's listening to entrepreneurship podcasts, marketing podcasts, educational podcasts, listening to books, finance books, reading, reading books um, on, you know, you're listening to educational content on your way to your job rather than, you know, Drake's album, Jack Harlow's new album. Nothing wrong with that. I love Drake. I love Jack Harlow. But if you want to level up, these are some ways to do it. Maybe you switch your nighttime workout to an early morning workout. So now you wake up earlier, you go work out, and then you go to work. And now your entire night after work is free. So let's say you enroll in a Lash Tech training program three nights a week. That's awesome. And on one of those nights, you're going to set aside as a think night where you can dream, plan, manifest, visualize, and maybe even, you know, go out to dinner with a new friend or a mentor um, that you've met along this journey. And you can talk about what your lash studio will look like, what it will feel like, how the clients will feel, how they'll look, what your life will look like, how your life will feel, how much money you'll make, the finances behind it, the logistics behind it, the name, the color palette, the scheme, like everything that goes into the business, you can have one night a week to create the space for that and create the opportunity to cultivate it and to grow this dream that you have. Then on the weekends, let's say once you get certified after your training, on the weekends, you get a part-time job at a lash studio to learn the ropes. Even if you're just front desk and you aren't actually lashing any clients, but um, you're just learning how the industry works, learning the pricing, how clients act, behave, all the ins and outs. Meanwhile, you're still having your nine to five. And then let's say eventually you learn the ropes and you start taking clients after work or on weekends until you're able to make the jump and open up your own lash studio. And suddenly, just like that, you are now living the life that you manifested all because you changed your daily habits. You officially leveled up. But what happens if you don't know where you want to be. This all sounds great. You know, I'd love to be the girly that works a nine to five and eventually drops it and lives out my dream of own, opening a lash studio and, you know, being the owner and lashing for a living. That would be great where I can support myself. But what if I don't know what I want to do? What if I just know I'm not happy or I'm not where I want to be? Maybe I am happy, but I'm thinking to myself, like, this can't be it. Like, I know there's more to my life. I know there's more to me that I haven't tapped into. What if I just don't know what I want to do, where I want to be in my life? First of all, that is totally normal and totally okay. The answer is you need to create space. And that's kind of the whole chicken and the egg thing that I was talking about. What comes first, creating space or the daily habits? Or is it the daily habits to create the space to then implement the daily habits? What comes first? This is a continuous cycle of creating space and implementing these manifestations into your daily habits. Once you have this life that you've dreamed of, You can then create the space to be grateful and then you can practice gratitude in your daily habits. Then you create the space to dream even bigger. Even though you already have the life at one point you wanted, you're now living out your dream life and you're thinking, man, I'm so grateful where I am. I'm so happy where I am. But what more can I do? Look at what I've already done. I want to do more. You create the space again to visualize, to manifest, to dream big all over again. Well, now what do I want to do? Let's say for this example with our girly of the Lash Tech, she wants to franchise her Lash Studio. Amazing. So now in her daily routine of maybe taking clients on Monday through Thursday from 12 to 8 p.m., maybe now before she goes into her Lash Studio, she's going to meet with lawyers to learn what it entails to franchise. Maybe she's going to cold email potential owners every day before she goes into work. Maybe on the weekends, she's going to go to job fairs and see if she can, you know, get any staffing so that she can scale and grow her company. It's all about implementing these new habits to continue to level up on your lifestyle. And it's all about the creation of the space creating the space in your daily life, creating the practice, creating the routine of space in your daily life to implement new habits. You start living the life you want in the present moment and showing up 
as that version of you. Speak the life that you want into existence. For example, if you're a student right now and you want to have your own lifestyle brand, whether it's five years after you graduate college, 20 years or tomorrow, introduce yourself to new people, even introduce yourself to yourself as the creative director of your own lifestyle brand. I am the CEO of blah, blah, blah. I am the creative director of da, da, da. I'm the chief financial officer of blah, blah, blah. Whatever you want, start introducing yourself as that to other people, even if it's not true. Like even if it's not where you are yet, but it's where you're going to be. Don't you think that if you start identifying as that, you're going to start showing up as that? I would say so. Back to this whole lifestyle brand example. Gather a mood board of what that brand will look like. How can you dress like what you want to create? How can you act as the products that you want to sell? How can you be the lifestyle that you are eventually going to promote? Show up as that version of yourself today. Guys, it really is all about creating space, implementing those habits, and going through the daily practice of being that version of yourself that you want to show up as. Daily habits and creating space are the foundation to a life that you have only dreamed of. Now it's time to level up and change because nothing changes if nothing changes. Guys, that is all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoy this episode. I really like it. I feel like fire in my bones when I'm talking about it. Um, and I think this is going to resonate with a lot of you guys and I hope it does. So, um, thank you guys so much for listening and so much for supporting. I truly appreciate every single one of you guys so much. And I can't wait to talk to you guys next week. Be sure to follow my Instagram. Um, I'm going to have my link tree down below that has all of my links in it. Um, But it has like my Instagram, my YouTube, where you guys can spin with me. It's all going to be down below in the show notes. Please be sure to leave a five-star review. It really, really helps the show and share this on your story. Send it to a friend and just get the show out there. Get the manifest girlies on it. Um, guys, thank you so much. I'll talk to you guys all in my next episode. And until then have a wonderful manifest Monday and the best week ever. Bye guys.